defending today's past champions. A biology professor from Madison, New Jersey, Rianne Barker. An ophthalmology resident from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Bryce Quam. And a software engineer from Boulder, Colorado, Garrett Markham. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy! Welcome all to our promises to be another exciting quarterfinal matchup in this Jeopardy! Champions wildcard competition. We've got a couple of nail-biters so far. Today we welcome back season 37 and 38 champions Garrett, Bryce, and Brianne. Good luck to all three of you. Let's go to work in the Jeopardy! round with these categories. We'll start you off with, oh, some landmarks for sale. Then we have a red-hot Latin lawyer, followed by Macbeth's witches on Food Network, each responsible ingredient mentioned in the Scottish play. After that, crossword clues H, nursery rhyme phobias, and it's always nice to with Aerosmith. Garrett, where to? Go to a Latin lawyer for 200. Testis is Latin for this participant in the trial. Can I get a testis? Bryce, what's a witness? Correct. Landmark 600. 4,500 years old, its royal headdress of limestone makes it the finest in noseless architecture. Bryce. What is the wing Nike? No. Brian, what is the Sphinx? Right. I'll take Aerosmith for 800. Aerosmith cover come together in this 1978 movie that starred Peter Frampton and the BGs. Bryce. What is Saturday Night Fever? No, I'm sorry. Error to Brian. Perhaps best forgotten the movie of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Back to you, Brian. All right, let's go with nursery rhyme phobias 800. While Mary Mary was quite contrary, she didn't seem to have anthophobia, a fear of bees. It's a fear of flowers. How does your garden grow, Brian? Nursery rhyme phobias for 600. Georgie Porgy didn't suffer from philomophobia, a fear of this. Brianne. What is kissing the girls? Yeah, or kissing anybody. <laughs> Nursery rhyme for a thousand. As he may have had pediophobia, a fear of poverty, he was in the counting house counting all his money. Garrett was the king. The king, right. Uh, let's go to Latin, red hot Latin lawyer for a thousand. If the movie title had some Latin, Paul Newman would have starred in the Eudicium for this. That would be the verdict. Garrett? Uh, red hot Latin lawyer 800. The answer there, the daily double. You can wager any roll with a thousand, Garrett. Oh, it's a thousand. Letting it all. Here's your clue. This Latin word, still used today, originally meant he pledged. Today, it's a sworn written statement. What is affidavit? That's correct. You double your money. Let's go to landmarks for sale, 800. You'll take El Gigante, a 72-foot one of the Moai or stone statues on this island. Great. Now, let's talk shipping. Grace, what is Easter Island? Yes. Landmarks 1,000. Sure, it's 1,815 feet tall, but its elevators can rise at 20 feet per second. You'll be home in Toronto in no time. Garrett, what's the CN Tower? Good for 1,000. Uh, let's do uh, Macbeth's Witches on Food Network for 1,000. Cool it with the blood of this large, colorful African monkey, and you're done. Who wants to taste? Garrett, what's a baboon? Cool it with a baboon's blood. Very nice. Uh, let's do Macbeth's Witches on Food Network for 800. Root of this, the plant that killed Socrates. Not hard to find at a good organic produce store. Garrett, what's hemlock? Yes. Uh, let's do crossword clues H for 800. Steeplechase barrier, six letters. Garrett, what's a hurdle? Is a hurdle. Crossword clues H for 1,000. Excessive arrogance or pride, six letters. Garrett, what is hubris? Correct. Uh, let's do um, Aerosmith for 600. This Aerosmith power ballad says, Sing with me, sing for the year, sing for the laughter, sing for the tear. Garrett, what is Dream On? That is in Dream On. Yes, you clear the $7,000 mark early. We're definitely to come to the moment. Let's chat briefly with our chance. Brian Barker is a biology professor from Madison, New Jersey. Uh, Brian Barker, first yeah. folks getting the call to come back on Jeopardy on an airplane, a boring morning meeting. Where were you? You were someplace nice. I was. I actually just um, been able to sit down on the beach in Mexico for vacation. Um, ah. So right in my beach chair. That must be a great environment, you know, the, the beauties of the beach. Oh, it really was. And it, it, it seemed very glamorous, and it was definitely in the top three parts of the vacation. <laughs> Well, welcome back. Bryce Wong from Philadelphia uh, was studying ophthalmology when you were first with us. Now you're an ophthalmology resident, is that right? Yeah, so I was in med school at the time, and I've become a real ophthalmology resident, so happy about that. I think you told us your goal was to open an eye care clinic. Is that still coming? Yeah, eventually. So once I'm through with the training, right now, I think just trying to reassure people at 3 in the morning that their ophthalmologist also knows the capital of MD is enough for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> that would take a big load off my mind. You're, you're not wrong. That's, that's good to know. Gary Marcotte is a software engineer. I think originally we announced you were from Los Angeles when you were last on Jeopardy, but Johnny said you were from Boulder, Colorado. You moved. That's right. Yes, I had an opportunity to move. Um, I was here in COVID and I moved afterwards. Um, and you know, when I was here, uh, you know, originally I was doing a lot of hiking, really getting into mountain climbing, uh, but now I'm here to post eyes. So being in Colorado, I've upped my game a little bit to the 14ers and starting to I didn't quite get there here in L.A., but... Well, if you keep coming back for Jeopardy, you can do some hiking while you're here. Maybe you can, yeah. I don't, I'm not telling you to knock off early. I want you to keep winning. But if you had a spare day, get some hiking in. Right now, you've got control of the board, Garrett. Let's get back into the Jeopardy round. Okay, let's do Aerosmith for a thousand. I don't want to miss a thing. Aerosmith's first number one hit was from this movie. Yeah. Where's was Armageddon. It was, yes. Crossway clues H-600. A fraud or a fake. Four letters. Bryce, what the hell? Correct. H-400. A plant eater. Nine letters. Bryce, two pairs of four. Correct again. Uh, Latin lawyer, 600. If you are not of sound mind to stand trial, you are this three-word Latin phrase. Bryce, what is non complex mentis? Right. Uh, Latin 400. Meaning, under the penalty, you've been served with this word from Latin right now. Garrett, what is subpoena? Correct. Let's go make bets, which is on Food Network for 600. You'll get a nice crunch with a scale of dragon and this sharp item from a wolf. Bryce, tooth, tooth of wolf, yes. Uh, make bets, 400. Instead of cilantro, we'll use slips of you slivered during one of these of the moon. Bryce, what is an eclipse? That's right. Landmark, 400. 151 feet tall, Manhattan adjacent. It comes with 29 foot reading ramp attached. Garrett, what is the Statue of Liberty? Yes. Let's do uh, Aerosmith for 400. Aerosmith saying, she's got a gun. What did her daddy do? <laughs> Brian. Who's Janie? Janie's got a gun, yes. Uh, nursery phobias for 400. If Mary's lamb had didascalanophobia, they would have been too scared to follow her here. Garrett, what is all the way home? No. I'll her to school one day. That's a fear of school. Brian? Aerosmith for 200. In an interview, this Aerosmith frontman said, Your kids never think of you as a rock god. Right? Miss Tyler. Steven Tyler, yes. Crossword clues, age 200. A Japanese style grill, seven letters. Right? What is Hibachi? Right. Nursery rhyme phobia, 200. If you're freeophobic, you won't like your peas porridge this way. Right? What is cold? Good. Like that, 200. Use a whole toe, but only the toe of this similar creature. You want that subtle flavor. Brian? Where's the new? No. Here it's a frog. Yes, toe frog. And landmarks for 200. Finish it off. It cost $1.5 million to build by 1889, but now it can be yours. We'll even throw in its antenna. Say we to this while you can. Brian, with the Eiffel Tower. Correct. They want you to buy the Eiffel Tower. That takes you to twenty-six hundred dollars, Brian. You'll be selecting
I'll take fun with the amateur for 2000. A spheroid might say, you can call me prolate, or this like the earth, just don't call me late for dinner. Here it was, I'll wait, I'll wait, right, uh, geometry 1600. Some of the dimensions of the Parthenon resemble the golden type of this quadrangle. Brian, with a rectangle, good. Fun geometry for 1200. This term, meaning having two equal sides, usually refers to triangles, but can also be used as trapezoid. Here it was, isosceles, correct. Snoop E6 for 800. In this 1978 film, Eve Arden plays the principal, who threatens a cocky keyboard with banging eraser. Dad, 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 dad does not want gifts. He said don't buy. After school. Brian, with a trees. That's it. Eve 6 for 2000. In this 1957 film, Joanne Woodward had a trio of personalities, including Eve White and Eve Black. Brian, what is the three faces of Eve? For 2000. Eve 6 for 1600. And Baxter played Evelyn Heath in Just in the House and Eve Harrington in this 1950 film. Garrett was all about Eve. You got it. Um, Eve 6 for 1200. Eve is the first name of this character, played by Naomi Harris in Skyfall. Garrett, who is my name? For all those years, money money finally got a first name. Let's do Aerosmith for 2000. Answer mm-hmm. there. This is a daily double, Garrett. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do here? I'll do 7,000. It's a big wager. Let's see if it pays off in Eros Myth. This word for the mind shares a name with the girl loved by Eros. Who is Psyche? You got it, yes. We just heard 20,000. Uh, let's see what Eros Myth for 1600. Hesiod listed Eros as one of the primordial deities, along with Gaia and this amorphous, messy one. <laughs> Chaos, who loves mess. Back to you, Garrett. Let's go to one of these kings is not like the others for 2,000. Carloman II, Ferdinand VII, Juan Carlos I. Right. Who is Carloman? He is French. Yes, the others are Spanish. Um, King 1600. Frederick III, Nicholas II, Wilhelm II. Right. Who is Nicholas II? Yeah, he's Russian. Kings for 12. Edward the first, Oscar the first, Gustav the first. Brianne, who's Edward the first? Correct, he was not Swedish. Honey not enough honey definitions for 2000. A school class for a prisoner, or a large open space for crowds at an airport. Mm-hmm. Bryce, what's a concourse? Very good, 2000 for you. Kings 800. Frederick the Great, Ivan the Terrible, Peter the Great. Bryce, who's Frederick the Great? The only German, yes. Okay, corral 1200. I'm a Duroc pig, raised for this rendered fat. Bryce, what is lard? That's it. Corral 1600. As I'm this breed, you might want to keep your distance. Brianne, who's a longhorn? That's it. Okay, corral me for 2000. Don't worry, I show no signs of this, FMD for short. The US hasn't had an outbreak since 1929. Let's keep it that way. Garrett, what is foot and mouth disease? You got it. Uh, honey not honey definitions for 1600. Answer there. The other day we know. Uh, you got them both, Garrett. And we'll leave 1,000. All right, for $1,000 in punny and non punny definitions, here is your clue. A colossal brim of a cap or an overseeing manager. Or a supervisor. Well, a supervisor, yes. You got it, fast. Let's go back to Eros Miss for 1,200. The Romans called Eros Cupid or this, which they also put after Omnia Vincent. Garrett, some more. Yes. Um, Eros Miss 800. In Greek myth, Eros was often the son of this loving beauty goddess by any of several godly fathers. Bryce, the Daphrodite. Right. Honey 12. Put on that frock again, or right or wrong. Bryce. What is re vest? No, I'm sorry. Brian. What is redress? You got it. Plenty and not plenty definitions for 800. To prepare for an exam insufficiently, or a Broadway acting replacement. Garrett was understudy. To understudy, yes. Smooth fun with geometry for 800. The line along which a bishop in chess moves, it cuts a square into two triangles. Garrett was a diagonal. Yes, it is. Um, fun with geometry 400. A pool shark playing bees knows the ball hits the side and bounces off at the same one. Brian. What is an angle? Right. E6 for 400. Eve Plum said, Marsha, 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 has this middle daughter on the Brady Bunch. Brian. Who is Jan? She was Jan. One of these kings is not like the others for 400. Henry the Seventh, Louis the Fourteenth, Richard the Third. Bryce, is Richard the Third? No. Oh. Garrett, who is Louis the Fourteenth? Yeah, two of them are British, one French. Uh, okay, Corral me 800. I know you've got to keep tabs, so sure, put that RFID tag on this part, where they usually go on tabs. Bryce, what's in here? Yes. Corral 400. Even though I'm a Beastmaster cow, one of the six essential qualities I fulfill is the ability to give this. Brian, with milk? Yes. Eros Smith for 400. In the epic Argonautica, Eros's arrow makes Medea fall in love with this man. Garrett, who's Jason? That's right. And that's the shot. Honey, definitions. The period before a short stroll, or the introductory statement of the U.S. Constitution. Brian, what is the preamble? That's correct. Taking you to 12,600. All three of you in five digits. That's what we like to see. But Garrett's got a big lead heading into final jeopardy. Today's category is bodies of water. While they make their wagers, we'll step away for a moment, and then we'll come right back. We'll finish off the week with bodies of water as our final jeopardy category. Here's the clue. The Goshute, a Western people, called this vast body of water culture ah, meaning bad water. 30 seconds. Good luck. Bryce Wong with $10,400. His response? What is the Great Salt Lake? Yes, bad water because we couldn't drink from it. Also, rest in peace, Grandpa. Did you just lose your Grandpa, Bryce? Yeah, last week. Was he a Jeopardy fan? He was. That's a lovely tribute. I'm happy to say you're correct, which means you add nothing at all. You stay with $10,400. Brian Barker was in second place. Did you come up with the Great Salt Lake? No, Nida Lake is not correct. You wagered A201, dropping you down to $4,399. But Gary Barker had a whopping $27,400 going into final. Did you come up with the Great Salt Lake? Just for bragging rights, he did. He wagered, just like Bryce, nothing at all. $27,400 on the day. On the spot in the semifinals. Congratulations, Gary, you advanced. Thank you for being with us all week on Jeopardy. We'll see you on Monday.